so it's again great to be with you guys. You can open up your Bibles, the book of Acts, Acts chapter one. Let's go right okay. we'll be getting today. There we go. So the church, our church, uh, recently was do, just going through our first principle studies. Yep. Yep. Uh, as many of the members know, and going through uh, kind of a series of studies on building people's faith. Mm -hmm. yep. And so uh, now, uh, for the next four weeks, we're going to be working on a series in the Bible, and mm. that's the book of Acts. Come on, bro. The yes. book of Acts. So today is the first lesson Let's do it. in the book of Acts series. Part one is called Building a Great Church. Woo! Building yeah. a Great Church. And it'll be uh, covering books Acts 1 through 8. So and we've got a lot of ground to cover today. So I'll try to go a little bit fast, but I hope you guys are ready for a great long time. Yeah, let's go! Let's do it! I I you know, uh, in our society, and even at this time, people uh, talk about greatness. Yep. Do they not? Yeah. Like, wasn't that turkey great at uh, Thanksgiving? Wasn't the gravy great? Yeah. Or the cornbread great? Oh, or yeah. whatever you ate for Thanksgiving, wasn't it great? Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. That, like Ooh, Jerry's yeah. three deep fried turkeys, weren't they Ooh, great? Yeah. Right? I mean, that's how you describe things, right? Jeez. You know, oh, wasn't that football game great? Yes. Or yeah. uh, wasn't yeah. that, that Black Friday special you got? Uh -oh. Wasn't that a great uh -oh. deal? Uh -oh. Did you get a great yeah. deal on that Black Friday yeah. special, yeah. right? We, we start talking about know. things that are great, but the one thing that we don't necessarily talk about is my church is great. Yep. Oh, right? wow. And uh, we want to let, let the Bible tell us what a great church is. Yeah. Now, I, I can break the, the, it down really quickly for us. We just have a real short service, right? Mm -hmm. So a great church has great singing. Yay. Yes. Right? Yes, a great does. band, some great entertainment, right? It has a two-handed preacher most of the time. Yeah. A one-handed preacher. Oh, uh, just in case, I wasn't wearing this cast earlier in the week. I'm now earlier in the year I was. But yesterday I was giving my dog a bath. Oh, and no. he does not like bath water. I guess so not. he's fighting me the whole time. I went to pick him up and I slammed my hand, which I had a broken wrist already. And I slammed it against the wall and then the bathtub and landed on it. So Oh, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> great. You're a great job. <laughs> exactly. Great job. So great that's, great. that's why I'm wearing my cast because oh, I man. think I might have rebroke my knee. Oh, 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 later on, the, the oh, urgent care great. to have yeah. them take x rays, but I'm in a lot of pain like I was before. Oh, but, no. so, great, great. Uh, so, I know, great. So, great I'm going to need Mo to hold the Bible for me today. I got you, I got you. I got you. I got you. So, uh, but let's look here in Acts chapter 1, Come starting on, in verse 1. Building a great church. As we talked about, you need a great band, right? Yeah. We're going to see that, I'm sure, in here, that you've got to have great entertainment if you oh, want a great church. No. You need to have a great two-handed preacher if oh, you're going to have a great church, right? What? You need to have a great kids' kingdom program, oh, right? The kids have to be taken care of, needs to be special, uh, not locked away in a bedroom upstairs and uh, stuff like that. Okay, wait, they're not locked away. But here we go, Acts yeah, chapter 1, that starting in verse 1. Here, it is. Okay. here we go, Jay. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So uh, this gives us a little introduction to the book of Acts. Uh, it's written by a guy named Luke. And he wrote a former book, he says here, which is the book of Luke. 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 Right, exactly. This is a participation day. Which I'm picking up on that clue, right? So he uses a literary term. He says here, my former book, Theophilus. Theophilus uh, simply means friend of God. So he's not writing to a particular person necessarily. Most scholars believe, but just as a general, hey, my friends of God. Now, some people believe it was a particular guy named Theophilus. 
Either way, we got the book of Acts, right? Uh, and, and what he's writing, he says, in my for former book, I wrote about what Jesus began to do and to teach. The book of Luke is meant to teach us about Jesus' ministry, what he taught, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's continuing on now with the book of Acts, and he gives us here a little insight into what's going to be talked about. And what was it that Jesus talked about when he was risen from the dead? Kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, right? Oh. It says here in verse uh, 3, it says, in a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. What was important to Jesus was the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, from our previous study in the church, we understand that the kingdom of God and the church are the same thing, right? right. So if Jesus yeah. is talking about the kingdom of God and what that's going to look like, he also means that to be what the church is going to look Come like. Come on, Jay. Yeah. And uh, the book of Acts itself is a history, if you will, or a uh, a glimpse of what the very first Christian church on the planet Earth yep. looked like. Come on. Built by the guys who walked, the guys and gals who walked with Jesus, yeah. who knew Jesus, who understood uh, who Jesus was. Go We're going to see the book of Acts is going to cover, and if you stick around for the whole four-part series, it's going to cover a period of about 35, 40 years, something like that, uh, of time right after the death of Jesus. Come on, bro. And so if we're going to build a great church, we've got to be one that resembles what we see in the Bible. Do we not? Yes. yes. So I have nine points for you today. Amen. Yeah. I don't see that in the Bible. And I'm joking. We got all the eyes. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Sorry, Tim. Pick it right. Pick it right. Pick it right. So, the book of Jay. So my first point, the Great Commission. Oh, if we're going to build a great church, we've got to have a great Commission. Like that. We read this starting in verse 6. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What was the commission that Jesus gave them? Go. To go. We know that from Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. What does it say? Go. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, so go. 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 And make disciples of all nations. nations. Right? That it was supposed to be a church that goes everywhere. Yep. Did Jesus want us to build a great community church? No. no. Driving in here, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's a beautiful community church. Yeah. You pass by yeah. this yeah. Right? right? If we're going to build a great church, you've got to have a great church building. Yep. Yep. Right? No. 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 You don't need to have a great church no. building. You, you need to have a great commission. Yeah. A task of saying, go yeah. and help uh, people all over the world yeah. know Jesus. Yeah. You know what's amazing is we sit in a room with the people who really understand this. You know, I think about the group that we have here. It is so amazing to see all of us here. I'm so excited to see Tyler and Shay. Wow. Yeah. You know, they started the church here yeah. six years wow. ago. Yeah. It's so awesome to see how God has used them in so many ways. Yeah. Tyler shared he was baptized in Eugene, Oregon. Yeah. I used to live in Eugene, Oregon. Wow. You know, it's pretty cool. We have a little common history together. Yeah. Now, not at the same time, I was much, I'm much older than Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler was not getting seen in this count. So, uh, but, but, the, but the fact is, is that God uses people from different places to go and make disciples. Right? He said, preach the word here in J Jerusalem. Which means that some people were meant to stay in Jerusalem yeah, right. to preach the word. Yeah. But some people needed to go to other places <laughs> and preach the word. Right? Mm -hmm. Some people were supposed to go to... Judea, the rest of Judea. Some people were supposed to go to Samaria and some people to the ends of the earth. Yeah. You know, we have people that have done a little bit both. Lois yeah. was baptized in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. And yet he, here he is in Texas. Yeah. He's a Seattle Seahawks fan. We won't hold that against him. You know, but, uh, you know, you know, we got some West Coast influence in the room. We've got some East Coast influence in the room. Do we have anybody actually born in Texas in this room? Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay! Uh, 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 a few people born in Texas. We had the great commission, yeah. the desire to go and make yeah. disciples of different places, yeah. to teach people everywhere we go. Yeah. You know, we've gone to 63 different nations. 
in every populated continent on our earth, wow. yep. we have a church, right? Uh -huh. And it's amazing as to see like the Hardings who've moved what nineteen yes. times or twenty yeah. yeah. times. Yeah. 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 Ron's goal was to preach and live in every state in the United States. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I don't know what we can do. That's Judea, um, right? We have some people who've been missionaries. Marvin, haven't you gone overseas? No. No? <laughs> not, yet. Not, yet. Not, yet. not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Write down his dates. November 26th. We think about Tyler and Shay having helped start the church in Brazil. Brazil. To start the church there. That's awesome. To go overseas and plant churches, right? To go to other places. Come on. But I have a question for you. Okay. How about Weatherford? Ooh. Oh, Who's going to hit Weatherford? Yeah. Who's going to go to Weatherford, which is west of west of Fort Worth, right? How about Alito? They're both west. We got Jerry and Lori because they want to plant Waxahachie. Yay! about some of the other cities around here that need to know the word. How about the University of North Texas in Denton? Yeah. Is there something like 40,000 college students oh, yeah. up there? Yeah. You know, we've got, we've got to send a group there. Right? That's part of Judea for us. Jerusalem is Fort Worth, this metroplex area. But the fact is, is that if we don't live out, if we're not part of a church that's living out the Great Commission, then we're not part of a great church. Yes. The great church says, okay, my neighborhood. God put you in the neighborhood you're in. Why? Come on, bro. So you can help your neighbors need, need to learn about Jesus. Come on, Jack. Right? Why you work where you work? Because the people that you work with need to know about Jesus. Yeah. Where do you, you know, where you go to school is the same thing, Right? In Fort Worth, we have TCU and TCC, and yeah. God willing, we'll start having church there. Uh, so it's, again, great to be with you guys. You go, can open up your Bibles, the book of Acts, Acts mm. chapter 1. Let's go, bro. Okay. Yeah. beginning today. There we go. So the Absolutely. church, our church uh, recently was do, just going through our first principal studies. Yep, yep. Uh, as many of the members know, and going through... Uh, kind of a series of studies on building people's faith. Mm -hmm. yep. And so uh, now, uh, for the next four weeks, we're going to be working on a series in the Bible. And mm. that's the book of Acts. Come on, bro. The Acts. book yes. of Acts. So today is the first lesson Let's do it. in the book of Acts series. Part one is called Building a Great Church. Woo! Building okay. a Great Church. And it'll be uh, covering books Acts 1 through 8. There so we've go. got a lot of ground to cover today. So I'll try to go a little bit fast, but I hope you guys are ready for a great long time. Yeah, let's go! Let's do it! You know, uh, in our society, and even at this time, people uh, talk about greatness. Yep. Do they not? Yeah. Like, wasn't that turkey great at Thanksgiving? Wasn't the gravy great? Yeah. Or the cornbread great? Yeah. Or whatever you ate for Thanksgiving, wasn't it great? Oh, yeah, right? yeah. That, like Ooh, Jerry's yeah. three deep fried turkeys, weren't they great? Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's how we describe things, right? Jeez. You know, oh, wasn't that football game great? Yeah. Or uh, wasn't yeah. the, that Black Friday special you got? Uh -oh. Wasn't that a great? Great uh, deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get a great yeah. deal on that Black Friday yeah, yeah, special, yeah. right? We, we start talking about know. things that are great, but the one thing that we don't necessarily talk about is my church is great. Yep. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, we want to let, let the Bible tell us what a great church is. Yeah. Now, I, I can break the, the, it down really quickly for us. We just have a real short service, right? Mm -hmm. So a great church... <laughs> Has great singing. Yeah. Yes. yes. Right? Yes, a great does. band, some great entertainments, right? Oh, it has a two handed preacher most of the time. Oh, oh, one handed oh, preacher. Oh, uh, okay. Just in case, I wasn't wearing this cast earlier in the week. I'm now earlier in the year I was. But yesterday I was giving my dog a bath. Uh -oh. And oh, he does not like bath water. I guess so not. he's fighting me the whole time. I went to pick him up and I slammed my hand, which I had a broken wrist already. And I slammed it against the wall and then the bathtub and landed on it. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, so y'all had a battle. And so, Nothing. Oh no! <laughs> yes! Great. Great. You're a great job. <laughs> exactly. Great job. So great that's great. that's why I'm wearing my cast because oh, I think man. I might have rebroke my knee oh. oh. later on. The, the oh, person who cared to have yeah. them take X-rays, but 
I'm in a lot of pain like I was before. But it's oh, no. great pain. Uh, so I know great. So great pain. I don't need, I don't need Mo to hold the Bible for me today. I got you, but I got you. I got you. So, but let's look here in Acts chapter one, Come starting on, in verse one. Building a great church. As we talked about, you need a great band, right? Yeah. We're gonna see that I'm sure in here that you gotta have great entertainment if you're oh, in a great church. No. You need to have a great two-handed <laughs> preacher if oh, you're gonna have a great really church, right? Yeah. You need to have a great kids' kingdom program, oh, yeah. right? So the kids have to be taken care of. Needs to be special, uh, not locked away in a bedroom upstairs and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> okay, wait, they're not locked away. <laughs> Camera. But here we go. Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Here we go, Jay. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. So uh, this gives us a little introduction to the book of Acts. Uh, it's written by a guy named Luke. And he wrote a former book, he says here, which is the book of Luke. 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 Right, exactly. This is a participation day. Which I'm picking up on that clue, right? So he uses a literary term. He says here, my former book, Theophilus. Theophilus uh, simply means friend of God. So he's not writing to a particular person necessarily most scholars believe, but just as a general, hey, my friends of God. Now, some people believe it was a particular guy named Theophilus. Either way, we got the book of Acts, right? Uh, and what he's writing, he says, in my former book, I wrote about what Jesus began to do and to teach. The book of Luke is meant to teach us about Jesus' ministry, what he taught, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's continuing on now with the book of Acts, and he gives us here a little insight into what's going to be talked about. And what was it that Jesus talked about when he was risen from the dead? Kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, right? Oh. It says here in verse uh, 3, it says, In a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. What was important to Jesus was the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, from our previous study in the church, we understand that the kingdom of God and the church are the same thing, right? right? So if Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God and what that's going to look like, he also means that to be what the church is going to look Come like. On, Jay. Yeah. And uh, the book of Acts itself is a history, if you will, or uh, a glimpse of what the very first Christian church on the planet Earth yep. looked like. Come on. Built by the guys who walked, the guys and gals who walked with Jesus, yeah. who knew Jesus, who understood uh, who Jesus was. So, uh, We're going to see the book of Acts is going to cover, and if you stick around for the whole four-part series, it's going to cover a period of about 35, 40 years, something like that, uh, of time right after the death of Jesus. Come on, bro. And so if we're going to build a great church, we've got to be one that resembles what we see in the Bible. Do we not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I have nine points for you today. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see that in the Bible. And I'm yeah. not joking. We got all right. Right. So, the book of J. So, my first point, the Great Commission. Ooh. If we're going to build a great church, we've got to have a great commission. Like that. We read this starting in verse 6. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What was the commission that Jesus gave them? Go. To go. We know that from Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. What does it say? Go. All go. authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, so go. Go. go and make disciples of all nations. nations. Right? That it was supposed to be a church that goes everywhere. Yep. Did Jesus want us to build a great community church? No. Driving in here, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's a beautiful community church. Yeah. You pass by and it's huge. Oh, yeah. right? Right. If we're going to build a great Street. church, you've got to have a great church building. Yep. Right? No. 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 You don't need to have a great church no. building. You, you need to have a great commission. A task of saying, go 
and help uh, people all over the world yep. know Jesus. Yeah. You know what's amazing is we sit in a room with the people who really understand this. You know, I think about the group that we have here. It is so amazing to see all of us here. I'm so excited to see Tyler and Shay. They started the church here six years ago. It's so awesome to see how God has used them in so many ways. Tyler shared he was baptized in Eugene, Oregon. I used to live in Eugene, Oregon. You know, it's pretty cool. We have a little common history together. Now, not at the same time, I was much, I'm much older than Tyler. <laughs> Tyler was not get seen discount, but I know that. So, uh, but, but, the, but the fact is, is that God uses people from different places to go and make disciples. Right? He said, preach the word here in J Jerusalem. Which means that some people were meant to stay in Jerusalem yeah, right. to preach the word. Yeah. But some people needed to go to other places <laughs> and preach the word, right? Some people were supposed to go to... Judea, the yeah. rest of Judea. Some people were supposed to go to Samaria and some people to the ends of the earth. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have people that have done a little bit both. Lobus yeah. was baptized in Florida. Yeah. 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 And yet he, here he is in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's a Seattle Seahawks fan. Oh. We won't hold that against him. You know, but, uh, you know, you know, we got some West Coast okay. influence in the room. Yeah. We've got some East Coast influence. Oh. In the room. Hey. Do we have anybody actually born in Texas in this room? Yay! <laughs> Yay! 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 Uh, a few people born in Texas. Everybody Yay! had the great commission, the desire to go and make yes. disciples of different places. Yep. To teach people everywhere we go. Yep. You know, we've gone to 63 different nations. In every populated continent on our earth, wow. yep. we have a church, right? Uh -huh. there. And it's amazing is to see like the Hardings who've moved what nineteen yes. times or twenty <laughs> times. Was time. was Ron's goal is to it's preach it's and, it's and it's live in every state in the United States. I don't know. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Judea, right? We have some people who've been missionaries. Marvin, haven't you gone overseas? No. No. Not yet. Not yet. Down his dates. What <laughs> we think about Tyler and Shay having helped yep. start the church in Brazil. Brazil. To start the church there. That's awesome. Yeah. To go overseas and plant churches, right? To go to other places. Come on. Come on. But I have a question for you. Okay. How about Weatherford? Ooh. Oh. Who's going to hit Weatherford? Yep. Who's going to go to Weatherford, which is west of, west west. of Fort Worth, right? Way, How about Alito? They're both west. We got Jerry and Lori because they want to plant Waxahachie. Yay! cities around here that need to know the word. How about the University of North Texas in Denton? Yeah. Is there something like 40,000 college students oh, yeah. up there? Yeah. You know, we've got, we've got to send a group there. Right? That's part of Judea for us. Jerusalem is for work, this metroplex area. But the fact is, is that if we don't live out, if we're not part of a church that's living out the Great Commission, then we're not part of a great church. Yes. The great church says, okay, my neighborhood. God put you in the neighborhood you're in. Why? Come on, bro. So you can help your neighbors need, need to learn about Jesus. Come on, Jack. Right? Why you work where you work? Because the people that you work with need to know about Jesus. Yeah. Where do you, you know, where you go to school is the same thing, Right? In Fort Worth, we have TCU and TCC, and yeah. God willing, we'll start having church there pretty soon. Yeah. On a regular basis. That's, and that's cool. awesome. Yeah. But we have so many young people in the city that need to know Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Need to know that that the great commission that Jesus gave us. Come on, Jerry. It's not only to for world evangelism, right. but it's for our local evangelism. You know, the amazing thing is, is that in 2007, Angie and I went to Orange County Come and became on. the first, official first leaders of the Orange County region. Come Come on. On. There were nine people in that region. Wow. That's great. Amen. The That's room great. was smaller than this one Absolutely. when we had our first church service, you know, in that region. But I look now and wow, there's something like how many people in that? 160. 160 oh. people in Orange County. That's almost but that's but that doesn't include the 5,000 they've sent to other places. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, literally, people from Orange County have gone all yeah. over the world yeah. planting churches and have come back, yeah. you know, which is amazing. 
but but it's not necessarily us that God's going to do do it with. It, it, God doesn't need anybody in particular. That's facts. Yeah. He just needs somebody yep. who's willing God just needs to somebody. preach and share the good news. Yeah. Yeah. To, to, to say, if we're going to build a great group, we've got to be a group that's about the Great Commission. Going out and helping other people. Yeah. Filling this room up and then filling the next room up and then filling the next room up. Yeah. I want to plant a vision. On, this was the vision that Tyler and Shay gave to us when we moved here five years ago. Come on, we want bro. you guys to lead the Fort Worth group. Yeah. At the time, it was just a small group of people. Yep. I was really and so many of those people have gone on to go in the ministry in different sure. places, which is awesome. Yeah. Because that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But the vision was to have our own church services here. Mm -hmm. Today, is the it's so appropriate that they're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Let's go, Jay. Let's go, Jay. Let's go, Jay. Because it was the vision that God put on their hearts and he put on Angie and I's hearts. And that's why we moved here. Yeah. To do wow. something like this and to see it grow and become something awesome. Go, Not because of us, but simply because we're willing to do what God wants us to do. Come on, come to build a great church on, based on the Great Commission. Yeah. Yeah. The second part, my second point is the great message. Okay. Again, the church is not going to be built because we have a great band, right. because we sing with great voices. Right. I wow. sang low, so that way you didn't have to hear the screeching. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but the church is going to grow when we have and we continue with a great message. Acts chapter 2. Let's Look at verse 22. Let's go. It's great, bro. Okay. Okay. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, it says this. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked <coughs> men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. What is the great message that we need to preach. Jesus. 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 His death, burial, and resurrection on the cross, right? Yeah. Yeah. The church is going to be great, not because the people in it are great, but because the message that the people in it preach is yeah. great. Oh, and the message that we great. preach is about Jesus. All of us can have different talents. I appreciate Eric's lesson for uh, or his message for co contribution. Because Lord. truly, we are the people that God's given us bags of gold. Mm -hmm. Some of us five, some of us two, some of us one. That doesn't matter. It's what we do with what cool, God bro. has given us yeah. to yeah. God's glory. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And yeah. the message is simply about Jesus. Yeah. Think about when we baptize someone. Isn't this what we share with them? Yeah. Do you believe yeah. that Jesus is the Son of God? Right. That he came to this earth, lived a sinless life, and yet on the right. on, was put on the cross and died on the cross for your right. sins? Yes. And yet was raised from the dead on the third day. Isn't that what we share? Yeah. Yeah. And the people say, Amen. yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the great message that we have to be willing to preach. Yeah. Right. Why should I talk to the person in Kroger that I meet? Because of the great message. Right. Because Jesus died because of my sins. And that's part of the great message. It's not just a fluffy message. Yeah. Oh, God loves you. You're okay. Oh, no. <laughs> God's grace will cover you. You don't have to worry about it. You're fine. Yes, it's awesome to be forgiven of our sins. Right. But we need to very real have a sense of it is my sins killed Jesus. That's right, yeah. My sinful way of life mm -hmm. killed mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the message Peter preached. Mm -hmm. You killed Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had to take that personal, yeah. right? Yeah. And they did. And what was their response to that? What should we do? Right? What should we do? That's got to be our response to yeah. the message as well. What should I do? Mm -hmm. Jesus died for me to give me a life, so what should I do? Right. Should I continue to live that life for me? Yeah. For my own pleasure? For my right. own upliftment? So for my own uh, gratitude? Or yeah. for my great retirement? Or, you know, what, what should I live for? Right. No, we've got to live for Jesus. Amen? Yeah. Amen. The message goes on. Skip down to verse 29. He says, fellow Israelites... I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried in his tomb is here to this day. Right. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing that what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, 
nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we're all witnesses to it. So what's the continuation of the message? Not that just Jesus died for you, but that he also raised to life for you. As Shay shared, that she could have a new life in Jesus. Come on, come on, Shay. I don't know about you guys, but before I became a disciple, I was a wicked guy. And I'm so grateful to be able to raise to a new life. Come on, Jay. I don't know about you guys. I'm still a wicked guy. At right. Come on. You know? Come on, bro. And I still have things to work through. But I know that because of God yeah. and only because of his message, can I have a relationship with God? Come on. Yeah. You know, how yeah. great is your conviction that Jesus was from God? Yeah. How great is your conviction and how great is the message that you share with other people? Yeah. When you invite people to church or to Bible talk, is it because, hey, come, we've got a really good preacher. He does a great job. That's wrong, by the way. Not me. Yep. No. <laughs> Come on, you know, we've, got, we've got a great preacher. You're going to really like him. He's awesome. Or, oh, you should come to sing. It's really cool. You'll like to sing. <clears throat> I've been guilty of that sometimes. Because we just want people to like church and they'll come to church. But a great church is not based on great music. A great church is not based on a great preacher. But we will talk about leadership in a little bit. A great church is not based on a great kids program. Our kids go do this, and we do this, and we have a summer school, and we do this. Mm-hmm. No. What was Jesus? Jesus was what they preached about. Yeah. Exactly. That was the message of the first church. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how great is your conviction if we were to ask ourselves, when it comes to the great message, if everyone in the church was like you, what would be the great message being preached wow. to the people around you? Yeah. If everybody is preaching what you preach, mm. what would be preached? Mm. Would you be building a great church? Yeah. My third point is we have to have great devotion. If we're going to build a great church, we're going to build on, it bro. with great devotion. Okay. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Come on, bro. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching to the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Let's go. So we see the church starts out with 120 people. Well, we didn't see that. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll just reference that. There were 120 people at the start of the church. No, bro. Then they preach. Peter preaches about Jesus, and 3,000 people are added to their number, Wow, which is awesome. Yeah. And so that first church went from 120, meeting in a living room, to 3,120, yeah. yeah. meeting in their front yard. <laughs> in the backyard. In the backyard. Some people in the back. Peter standing on the roof, preaching an old wall. There you go, there right? you go. But what do we see was part of the church? Great devotion. Yeah. Right? They were just devoted. And what were they devoted to? Well, the first thing they said they were devoted to was the apostles' teachings. Where do we find the apostles' teachings? More specifically, the New Testament. The New Testament, right? They were devoted to the apostles' teachings. Because the apostles were teaching about Jesus. Jesus. So they were devoted to learning about Jesus. Let me ask you this question. How devoted to you? How devoted are you to learning about Jesus? Are you more devoted to playing video games online? I know that can be a struggle for me. So I'm not preaching to anybody. Just me. Oh, <laughs> you know, but, but we think about our, our lives. We can be so devoted to our entertainment. Mm-hmm. How many of you have decided to binge watch a few TV shows or, hey, I got a week break. I can watch about 18 episodes of something. Right? Like we can be guilty of that too, right? Yeah, yeah. I think as people, we want to be entertained. We want to zone out and relax and yeah, do right. nothing. And so true, yeah. we get devoted to Come my on. show. Yep. Oh, I can't meet on Thursday because my show is on. Oh, this, oh, I gotta do this. Or, oh, I've gotta oh, do that. Or I gotta play this game. I get a special bonus. Game, this week I've been watching a whole bunch of Twitch TV because I get bonuses for my video game if I watch six hours a day of Twitch. Oh, that's a lot of time. So I just put my phone on and put it over the corner and go do my stuff. <laughs> 
That's not really hurt me. Yeah. Oh, 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 it was game oh, too hard. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. But what are we devoted to? We are devoted to the New Testament. What was the last time you remember memorized a book in the New Testament? Right. Not a verse, but a chapter. A whole book. Or a book. Yeah. You know? I think that's something that's been on my heart lately. Is like I got to memorize. I'm, I'm gonna put before you. You can ask. Them. I'm gonna memorize book or chapter Romans 12. Come on, okay. Or right. Let's go, bro. That's been on my heart to do that for a while, and I need to obey that and do that. So you can hold me accountable. But I'd like to know I'm not the only person who's right. being devoted to the scriptures. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that's what's gonna change our hearts, and that's so what's true. gonna change people's yeah. lives around us. Yeah. Right. Being devoted to living out those scriptures. You know, what was the next thing they were devoted to? Meeting together. Meeting together, right? Yep. Uh, let's see, that's it. Teach, uh, the apostles teaching in the fellowship. They were devoted to the fellowship, to being together and enjoying each other's company. It's so great to spend a day together for the holidays, but how about every day? Yeah. It says they met together later on with glad and sincere hearts. How often? Every day. Every day. Yeah. How do you feel about meeting with people every day? Okay. I know sometimes it's like, okay, I have church on Sunday, then we got men's midweek on Wednesday, then we got Bible talk on Friday, by Friday or Thursday. By Friday, I'm tired. I just want to be by myself. <laughs> right? And that's how we can feel sometimes. Like, okay, this is just too much. You're asking, you want me to drive to the Gorgie's house twice a week? Come on. That's like 20 minutes on the highway. That's light. I know my Orange County brothers and sisters are feeling that, right? LA people, right? You're just, uh, just really. Come on, Travis. Come on, Travis. Not cheap, but you don't really have to use much either. Rub it in, bro. Rub it in. But the fact is, like, that can be our hearts. I don't know about you guys, but I can just want to be by myself and be my own thing and just be left alone, you know? Yep. Angie and I can come home from work and just like, hey, it's good to see you. Okay, I'm going to this room. She goes to that room and we're done. Like, we, we'll talk later in two hours or something like that, you know? But that can be our attitude towards each other. Yeah. Like, we don't want to hang out and do things together every single day. But guess what? The first century church, that's what they did. <laughs> they lived, they were devoted to that. What does devotion mean? Addicted. Committed. Addicted. Committed. Oh, yeah. Committed. That's Sold out. Yeah. Sold out, yeah. right? <laughs> Good. Those are all great words yeah. defining it, right? Yeah. But is that us? Yeah. Are we devoted to the fellowship with one another? Yeah. Yeah. What comes next? The breaking of bread. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's that? Eating. Like no, no it's communion. Communion, communion. Remembering Jesus, the breaking of bread, remembering <laughs> Jesus' body. Mm -hmm. Do we reserve that for 15 minutes on Sunday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is that our daily life? Yeah. Do we remember Jesus every single day? Yeah. Are we devoted to that? When they got together as a family, they were remembering and talking about Jesus all the time. But how about us? How often do we talk about Jesus with each other? In our lives. Yeah. What was the fourth thing they were devoted to? Prayer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How about us? How devoted to our prayer lives are we? If they prayed and were devoted to it, that, that's got to be us as well. Yeah. Right? Like, how, how's our prayer life going? You've got to ask yourself. If, if everybody's devotion was the same as mine, how devoted would the church really be? No. You know? Yeah. And we've got to decide, like, that, that's part of what made this church so incredible. Mm -hmm. What you see is the church grows from 120 in Acts chapter 1 to 3,120 mm -hmm. in Acts chapter 2. And then you see them adding daily to that number. Mm -hmm. Daily, people were coming around because they saw this group that was just on fire. Yeah. And people were like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I want to be a part of it. Yeah. It's what attracted me to the church, Come on, was yeah. going to my brother's wedding. And seeing the brothers and sisters interacting and going, wow, they've got something I don't. Mm. And when one of the brothers said, hey, do you want to study the Bible? I was like, yeah, let me find out what you got going on that I don't have. Yeah. yeah. And then they showed me pretty quickly, like that next day. Let's go next day. Okay, that's what I don't have going on. <laughs> yeah. And it's been awesome. Yes. I'm coming up on 30 years at the end of oh, next year. Yeah. 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 
And I'm grateful for that. But we we see later on in Acts chapter 4 that the number of men grew to 5,000. Later on in Acts chapter 5, it states more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added the number. In Acts chapter 6, verse 1, it says the number of disciples was increasing. And after the leader corrected some problems that were uh, arising in the church, the number of disciples increased rapidly in Acts chapter 6, verse 7. Yeah. At this point, we get a sense that the church is not just a local congregation, but truly a movement of God moving throughout that area. By Acts chapter 8, they're in Samaria. In Acts chapter 9, the gospel was known all over Joppa. In Acts chapter 11, verse 21, it tells us the Lord's hand was with them and a great number turned to God. Some believe, some historians believe that the church in Antioch grew to 50,000 people. Could you imagine a church of 50,000 people in Fort Worth? Antioch was not a city bigger than Fort Worth. It was a prominent city. Fort Worth is a prominent city. The DFW area is considered the fourth largest city in the United States and pushing to be the third. Wow. Wow. And we have got a lot of people here. Yeah. Right? And if a church in Antioch can grow to 50,000 people, not because the disciples were awesome, yeah. But because the Holy Spirit was working because they were devoted yes. to each other. They were devoted to the message. They are devoted to one another. Yeah. They are devoted to the Bible. They are devoted to prayer. Mm-hmm. And, point four, they had great boldness. In Acts chapter four, 3, we see Peter heals a, a, a lame beggar. And... Okay. Starts preaching with great boldness, mm-hmm. right? In Acts chapter 4, because of that, in verse 8, we read this. Come on, Jack. So Peter and John are put in prison because of the healing of a beggar in Acts chapter 3. And then they're brought before the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 4. <laughs> verse 8 says this. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people. If we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. You know, it says here that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. He spoke with great boldness. Could you imagine going in before a trial of all these people, the leaders of your people? Could you imagine standing before Congress? That's basically what he was. He was standing before Congress. And all the congressmen, and all the TV candidates, C-SPAN, and everybody else is watching you. What are you going to say? That's what he preached. He preached with great boldness. Not only did he say, yeah, it was because of Jesus. Jesus healed him. It was an awesome thing. Thank you, thank you. No, that's not what he said. He said it was because of Jesus whom you crucified. He called them out on the carpet. You did it. You killed him. He is the Messiah that all people need to believe in. He wanted to make sure that he preached with great boldness, that the message just wasn't about Jesus, but about Jesus and their guilt before Jesus because of their sin. Right? Great boldness calls people to make a decision. Great boldness calls people to make a decision. See, when we study the Bible with people, some, we want to try to convince them and, and convey the message of Jesus and, and work with them, but sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. Right. I was an yeah. example of it not working. When I studied the Bible, I, the very first study I did was discipleship study. Mm-hmm. And I knew right from the beginning, okay, no, I'm not a disciple. Yeah. And the guy's like, great, do you want to be? Yes, okay. All right, and we began to continue studying and stuff like that. But they kept inviting me, hey, we have church on Wednesdays. Wednesdays back then... Uh, it was men and women together every Wednesday. So everybody went to church. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll come. And I didn't go. Oh. Then the next week, hey, we do a couple more Bible studies. Oh, you got to come to church. 
Wednesday night. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Didn't go. Mm. Then the third week, see, I was playing basketball on Wednesdays. Oh, oh yes, I was. I was playing basketball <laughs> Wednesday nights. <laughs> I really like to play basketball, and then I'd go with some friends. We'd have a little beer and relax and stuff like that, right? Yeah. I was, I was cleaning up in different parts of my life, but I wasn't really being called to this commitment. Come on, bro. So then the fourth time I studied the Bible, a guy named Rick Shibley came up. Came with them. And he was one of the leaders in the church. Mm-hmm. He's like, great, how's everything going? I'm like, good, I've been doing this. He's like, yeah, you were supposed to be at church yesterday. I'm like, yeah, I, I decided to work on my sin list, you know, write down all my sins and, and stuff like that. He's like, okay, cool. Half page. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the half page of paper that, it, that I'd written out. And I was just checking. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I've done a little bit of work. It was a few pages yeah, long, so that was good. You know, but, but he's like, let me look at it. And so I started to show it to him. And he read over and goes, that's interesting. I don't see anything here about pride. Oh! Ooh, yeah. Pride? That is I'm, I'm not really prideful. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and isn't, isn't pride good? Aren't you supposed to be kind of proud of your work and, you know, be proud? Yeah, let's look at a few scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> and we took a quick tour of the book of Proverbs. Okay, oh. long tour. Oh. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. Halfway through the lesson, you know what I was feeling inside? Right. Get the heck out of my house. Uh-oh. So I had invited them to my house. Right. And, you know, fed them. I gave oh, them something to drink and stuff like that. I was very hospitable. Oh, awesome. But he was yeah. just yeah. giving it to me. Okay. And you think this, and this describes you, and this scripture describes you. <laughs> just slapping me upside the head. One side of the Bible, and then the other side of the head, and then the back of the head, and the front of the head. And I was like, I got to move your feet, move your feet. <laughs> Inside, I was raging. Yeah. <laughs> but about a couple minutes after that, I realized, you know, he's just telling me the truth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the truth I need to hear. Yeah. You know? I'm so Come grateful for that day. Yeah. 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 He's like, and this is what we got going on. On Friday, Saturday night, we have a Bible study going on with a group of people. And we're watching a video. And if you really want to be a disciple, you'll be there. Wow. And he closed his Bible, yeah. got up, we're leaving. And left. <laughs> he called me to a decision that day. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what he didn't know, that with one of my girlfriends, oh, wow. we had tickets to a formal military ball that Saturday. Okay. Oh, I bet you Uh-oh. She had bought a dress. Okay. Oh. We had rented a hotel room. Oh. I had rented a tuxedo. Oh. We had bought the tickets. Oh. Like, all told, we were like $500 into this thing. Oh. You know? Back then, in the 80s, that was a lot of money. <laughs> It's just a tank of gas in LA right now. But, yeah, I know it is. Yeah. but I appreciate I appreciate Rick preaching with great boldness, yeah. Yeah. calling me to make a decision. Come on, bro. See, great great boldness calls people to make a decision. Uh, now, sometimes people will choose not to. Right. Yes, right. Yes. Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, called the Israelites to make a decision. Choose. Oh, yeah. Who are you going to follow? Yeah. Are you going to follow God? Then you'll do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're not, you won't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus calls us to make a decision to repent. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's full of grace. Yes, he's full of mercy. And he puts us in position so we can make the right decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But great boldness, if we're going to preach great boldness, then we've got to call people to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if the church is going to be great, it's because we're going to have a great boldness. Come on, Jay. Right? Come, Come on, Jay. Come on, bro. Awesome. My fifth point. We're going to have great power and great sacrifice. Yeah. Yes. We'll never build a great church with a great power and great sacrifice. Mm-hmm. There, in, in Acts chapter uh, 4, uh, or, yeah, yeah. sorry, Acts, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Let's go, bro. Mm-hmm. It says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. But they shared everything they had. Yeah. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the yeah. resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was so, and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, who the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Wow. Great power. Great power changes lives. Great power is is seen in the miracles 
when someone says Jesus is Lord and is baptized. Great power is demonstrated when marriages stay together yeah. for years. Right. Today, divorce is so prevalent yeah, is. In, our, in our country, right? Mm. Something like two-thirds of every marriage ends in divorce nowadays yeah. in the United States. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, I'm grateful. Angie and I have been married for 26 years. Let's go. Oh. And we had moments where whew, it took great power for us to yeah, stay together. We needed some great friendships yes. to help us out and encourage us and strengthen us. The Sears being among them, the Hardings yeah. being among them, right? Without friends to help each other, uh, stay faithful to each other and stay faithful to God. That's powerful in our country. When it's so easy just to quit <laughs> yeah. and just say, ah, moving on. Yeah, Let's just end as friends. Bye. See you later. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's not going to do any damage. Right. I was a teacher for 11 years and I saw so many of my kids mm -hmm. yes. watch their parents get divorced oh, yeah. and just see the hurt in the kids yeah. and realize, wow, such a hurting place, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and it, it happens. But with great power, the church, the, it also says there were no needy people among them. Mm -hmm. Wow. Isn't it a powerful group? When nobody in the group needs anything yeah. because everybody else is meeting those needs. Yeah. When someone needs their house painted, other people pitch in to help paint. Yeah. When someone needs to be moved in, other people help them move in. Yeah. When showing up serving. Yeah. When people need food, there's food brought to them. When people yeah. need medicine, there's medicine brought to them. Yeah. Wow. That, is, that, that speaks power. power. Yep. Yeah. Because it speaks of a selflessness yeah. Yeah. that we need to live with. Yeah. Come yeah. On, bro. I think about Barnabas. I'm challenged by his example yeah. of <laughs> sacrifice. It says that when he sold a field, mm -hmm. he came and put all the money at the apostles' feet. Yeah. 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 Could you imagine that? Selling your car, or selling a house, and bringing all the money and giving it to Ron or <laughs> to, to Scott Burley. Yeah. And though they're yeah. reputable, and you go... Yeah, shouldn't I keep a little of this for myself? Yeah. Right? That's our temptation, right? Yeah. Shouldn't I, you know, I'm just going to keep, you know, a little bit of money back. Yeah. No. That was great sacrifice. Yeah. They're like, I'm living for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus died for me on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give and God will take care of me. You know? Mm. That's oh, how Jake. that's that's how we have to live. That's yeah. the sacrificial life we've got to decide to live. Yeah. yeah. You know, as disciples, we know we have special missions every year to raise money to plant the churches all over the world. Yep. Yeah. Sure. But do we realize how very wealthy we are? Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes we get really fooled. But I live in a small house. My house is smaller than this one. So I, I don't really have a whole bunch. No, we're rich. Yeah. You know, just being down in Mexico City and seeing the people down there and how they so many of them live. So, so much poverty. Yeah. People living on the streets. You know, and you think, well, people here living on the street are rich. They get money all the time and food. And you get, I get people all the time begging and asking for stuff. And, okay, I'll give you a hamburger. Oh, no, I get hamburgers all the time. Can you just give me the money? I know. I <laughs> know. That's like, you're not poor. <laughs> you're not needy, you know. But to truly see people just be grateful for anything. The crumbs that we get. Yeah. Right? But, but as disciples, our life is going to be a life of sacrifice. Willing to sacrifice everything we have so that people all over the world could know the, the message Come on, Jay. of Jesus. Amen. Come on, Jay. Amen. Mm -hmm. My sixth point. Come on, bro. <laughs> to go along with great power, great sacrifice, great devotion, you know, uh, great buildings, right? No, just joking. Yeah. <laughs> we need to have great fear. Ooh. Great mm -hmm. fear. Wow. You can write these scriptures down. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, yeah. but fools despise wisdom mm. and discipline. Mm. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Wow. And here we read in Acts chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, mm. also sold a piece of property. Mm. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you have received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, 
but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, How could you conspire to test the Spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in, and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. You know, I read this, and I think it's such an important part of being part of the church. Great fear. Why? Does God want us to walk around afraid all the time? No. 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 But when we say great fear, what we should say is great respect and great reverence for God. See, Ananias and Sapphira did not have great fear of God. They were okay with lying, coming up with their own story, and not telling the whole truth. They wanted to look good before men by laying some of the money at the apostles' feet. But their heart wasn't in it. Have we ever given for special missions and your heart just isn't in it? Your weekly contribution, but your heart just isn't in it? You should have great fear. Because God knows. Yeah. You may give your contribution, but you have a bad heart about it. Guess what? God knows. Yeah. And he's not pleased. It's not just you giving the money that pleases him. It's the heart behind what you do. Wow. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 20, Moses says to the yep, people, yep. Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will, keep, will be with you, keeping you from, or keep you from sinning. In Proverbs 1, verses 1 through 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Psalm 36, verse 1 and 2, where there is no fear of God, we can't even detect our sin. In Psalm 27, verses 1 through 4, when you fear God, you don't have to fear anything else. Okay, come on. You know, how do you you determine your fear level? That's very (laughs) simple. You look at your sin level. You got a high level of sin, guess what? You don't have a very high level of fear. There's no fear in respect and reverence for God and what God has done for you in your life. Amen. Come on, Dave. You know, as a church, we've got to do the things that we do because we fear and we love and we respect and we revere God. Come on, Jay. Everything we do needs to come from that. Come on, Jay. Wow. But I, I don't know about you guys. I can struggle with selfish ambition. Yeah. I can want you guys to tell me, oh, you did a great job preaching today. Amen. So, I'll, I'll look forward to that later on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, baby. But, you got it. you're doing well, bro. Great job. Keep it up. Great job, bro. The fact is, I just want God to say, I did. Yeah, come on, Jay. Yes, I just want to preach so that God is pleased. Yeah. yeah. Right? I, now, I'm not always that way. And I have to wrestle to get my heart that way. Right. Yeah. I have to get up early and pray this morning. I had to stay up late last night and pray again just to make sure my heart was to please God mm-hmm. and not just to look good in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know? That can be all of our hearts, yeah. right? Oh, I just got to do this because it's the duty. Because if I don't do it, Ron's going to call me in and he's going to oh. talk to me and he's going to yell at me. Ron doesn't yell. Ron doesn't yell. You guys get that? You know what I'm saying? Like, we can do things because we want to please men. And that's what Ananias and Sapphira did. They gave just to look good in front of people. Yeah. No. They should have just kept all the money to themselves. Yep. No one said they had to give all their money to the apostles. Yeah. And Peter said, wasn't the money yours? Yeah. <laughs> you could have just kept it. You didn't have to give it. He says, and after you gave it, wasn't the money yours too? If you needed something, you, <laughs> you could have come and got it. Yeah. And, and yet, that can be our hearts sometimes. We just want to do something to please people oh, rather than God. Yeah. But if we're going to be a great church, we've got to have great fear. Right. And we got to start talking about our sin and our temptations. Yeah. I want to challenge us to, to confess our temptations, yep. not yeah. wait till it becomes sin. Right. Yeah. But te- man, I'm really tempted to, to not give everything today. Or I'm really tempted to just not even want to be at church today. Yeah. Or I'm really tempted, whatever it may be, I want to go sin or I want to go do this instead. We've, we've got to decide to have great fear 
in our hearts. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, Jay, My seventh point. Come on. If the church is going to be great, it's going to be great. It has to have great leadership. Come on. Come on. It says in verse chapter 6, verse 1, In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, yeah. the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. Mm. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This pro proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. What we see here is that uh, the church has its first problem. Well, one of their first problems, right? Yeah. Yep. There's racism oh. in the church. Yeah. That's not good, nope. right? And this is supposed to be the perfect church, right? Yeah. Well, no. It's not going to be perfect because people are in it. Yeah. Just like our church is not going to be perfect because there's people in it. Right? Yeah. right? You, specifically. Oh. oh wow. And me. Great. Wow. <laughs> Call me out. Because there's people in the church, it's never going to be perfect. But a perfect church, a great church, has great leadership to help get through these difficult times. Right. They realize, okay, there's a problem. Let's deal with it. Yeah. See, problems, situations arise. That's where we come and talk to each other. Yeah. yeah. So we can help deal with it. We can come up with a solution and say, all right, this is the problem. Uh, okay, let's let's deal with this. This church service today is an example of that. You know? It's like, okay, we got to have a regional church service. How, how do we do with that? You know, what do we need to do? Yeah. All right, Ron was supposed to be preaching this lesson, not me. Hey. He called me a couple days ago. Hey, uh, bro, I need to call an audible. Come you on. Hey, hey, this hey, so there it is. Omaha, oh Omaha. Oh <laughs> <laughs> you know right? But it's like, okay, we'll come up with a solution. Right? Come we'll come right. up with a lesson for today. Right. We'll preach and talk yeah. about being a great church. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the problem is today, when we say leadership, we can get the idea that we're in charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not great leadership. Mm -hmm. wow. What are these what are the, the, the new people picked to, to do? What were they what was their role? Serving. To yeah. work, wait on tables to serve. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. When you think of serving, do you think of leading? No. Not always. Not always. Not always. We should. Yeah. Right? We should. To be a servant is to be a leader. Paul, when he introduces himself in the book of Romans, what's he call himself first? A servant. A servant. He says, Paul, a servant of God. Called to be apostle. Called to be this. Called to be that. Right? In fact, if you look at all of his letters, almost all of them, he starts the same way. Paul, a servant. The word he uses is a word called doulos, or doulios in the Greek. It means a slave. Oh, yeah. It means someone who's chosen to be a slave for the rest of their lives. Right. Yeah. At that time, if you were in servitude or as a slave with someone, in the Jewish custom, you were served for seven years, and then you were released. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you could choose, like, all right, this guy's been really good yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. I got married, and though I'm being released, my wife is still going to be here, my kids are still going to be here. And I won't really be able to see them. So I can choose. Let's see. I was blowing it before. I didn't really have a job before. This guy's been pretty generous. I have a place to stay. I have, my family's taken care of. I want to be your servant for the rest of my life. Come on. I'm willing. You would go down to the temple. They would take your ear to the post. And they would stamp your ear with the guy's mouth. And you are now his servant for life. Right? It's called a dulios. You chose the life of a slave or a servant, right? That's the word that Paul uses. Say, when I became a Christian, I became a slave to Jesus. Yep. I came to serve mm -hmm. and to help other people. Golly. Is that your attitude? Come on. See, Come on, if we were to look at your life and say, okay, the level of leadership in your life, if everybody in the church was like you, how much server, servants would we have in the church? You know? Or do we draw a line? Come on. It's like, I'm willing to serve, but only this much. You know? 
I can only have three people over to my house, not four. Oh. So one of you have to Rochambeau and you're out. Rochambeau. Yeah, Rochambeau. Yeah. Or whatever you call it. Rotate. You know? Sometimes that can be our hearts. I can serve this much, but not more. You know? Yep. And we draw a limit. But that's not what these guys were doing. Right. Yeah. See, for the church to grow, is people need to raise up in different roles. Yes. It's not just Jay doing the communion, Jay doing the contribution, Jay doing the welcome. I'm going to yeah. lead the singing, and I'm going to do the lesson, and I'll close later on and tell you how great I did, okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> the church has got to be like a great Thanksgiving dinner where everybody makes one thing, brings one oh, thing, shares okay. it all together, and it just looks. becomes a tremendous yeah. meal. Yep. Yeah. The meal at the Hardings was awesome. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But it, it wasn't one person did everything. Uh, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Now, sometimes you can go to a house and it seems like one person's cooking everything because they got great talents. But that means you got to be a great cleaner of dishes, yeah. right? Yeah. Let, me, let me sweep the house for you. You clean all, You do all the... My first household that I lived in, there was one brother that loved to cook. And actually, he loved to clean the kitchen, too, well, which is amen. good, because I didn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it was look, I can vacuum like house. a sub again, so I'll vacuum the house. I'll keep the household vacuuming and clean. You cook the meals, and you clean the dishes. We're good. And yeah. the brothers did their thing and stuff like that to clean bathrooms and stuff like that. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. But that's what the church has got to be. Like, how can here I am, send me. How can I serve? What can I do? That's leadership in the church. Yep. As this group grows, guess what? The amount of serving that's going to be needed is going to grow. Yep. Yeah. We're going to need people to drive people here. Go yeah. pick these people up. The first, the, the first real Bible talk that I was a part of, I was the only single guy in it. Well, Everybody else was married. Amen. Oh, amen. So we'd, we'd have Bible studies with people like, hey, this guy needs a ride. Call Jay. He'll, he'll get him. <laughs> that was my job. I'd go, no pick reason. the guy up, drive him and drop him off with the married guys. That's a big deal. Okay, come back in two hours. Okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to be part of the Bible study. Oh, hey, hey. Drop him off. Oh, Sometimes he was high. angry when I drove him home. How you doing? You okay? Okay, sorry. I'll see you later. <laughs> you know? But that was my job. That's what yeah. I learned, just to oh, serve yeah. in the group. I remember wanting to spend some time with the guy who was leading the church, the evangelist at the time. I just want to learn from you. He's like, okay, come over to my house. And I came over and it's like, okay, what I need you to do is pick up the weeds in the backyard. Oh, oh wow. Right? I didn't okay. come do the I came to hang out with you. I know, right. but I really need you to just do the weeding in the backyard. Yeah. Okay, I'll do the weeding in the backyard. On, That's what I did. I did the weeding in the backyard, you know? Learning to serve and just give our hearts. Yeah. See, God chose these guys to do this role, wait on tables. Later on, Stephen would be the first martyr in the right. church. Yeah. It wasn't one of the apostles. It was Stephen. Yeah. Later on in chapter 8, we'll talk about it here in a second, Philip begins yeah. the Sumerian ministry. Yeah. Where did he learn how to do that? By serving. Yeah. Yeah, by waiting on tables. Mm -hmm. By doing the, the very little details to make sure that the church was great. Amen.